Uh, hi everyone, we are Group 25 and our IC topic is the negative financing effect of the expanded central bank collateral framework. Our study focused on a special policy which started in 2018. And the reason behind this policy is that since 2013, the failure of traditional monetary policy has been recognized uh, since it caused many stubborn problems such as high leverage ratio and the structural imbalance. So the central bank has created a variety of structural monetary policy tools such as SLF, MLF, DMLF, and so on. And at the meantime, the concept of green development has become very crucial for our economic growth and has taken root in the hearts of the people. So in June the 1st, 2018, there, here comes a policy that aims to further increase support for green finance. The PBOC expanded the scope of collateral for MLF, included green credit and green bonds into the collateral framework. This policy sounds quite good since it can guide financial institutions to increase support for green economy and alleviate the financing difficulties for small and middle companies. Uh, and it can also promote the healthy development of the credit bond market and so on. However, some also pointed out that the uncertainty in the policy may lead to the, some problems of uh, rent seeking and distortion of the structure of credit funds. So we concern about a question that uh, after 2018, whether this new monetary policy is effective in supporting green finance. With this question, we first conducted a thorough literature review. And in this page, I, I just uh, give you a very brief summary. Uh, we focus on two study fields. First is the overall role of monetary policy and especially the collateral policy. Uh, second is the impact of credit costs, uh, where we, we see some empirical studies in the US uh, show that the support of such policies may be uh, not very significant uh, or, or say it will cause some structural distortions. And such a literature reveal just give us a very essential reference to explore the impact of the new green credit policy on firms so that we can conduct our own empirical research. And in the following part, uh, my group members will further explain our empirical method and results. Frank Scholars mentioned that through the new monetary policy, the central bank liquidity injection will have a positive impact on supply of commercial bank credit. In other words, after green credit is included in collateral framework, commercial banks will supply more green credit to enterprise. However, Wang Chong and Zhu Hong pointed out that the new monetary policy may not play an effective role in increasing the green credit availability. On the one hand, the new monetary policy may inhibit the role of the market in allocating resources due to economic system factors making the new monetary policy unable to effectively protect the possibility of some enterprise financing through green credit. On the other hand, rent-seeking behavior may also distort the entire market's ability to obtain bank green credit. Based on the above facts, we propose hypothesis 1. A central bank inclusion of green credit in the collateral framework of the new monetary policy will not have an obvious impact on the availability of corporate green credit financing. The collateral expansion behavior of the central bank is theoretically to make up for the weak traditional monetary policy. However, the existence of the rent seeking effect may lead to the implementation of policies that are not conducive to the development of the enterprise, resulting in a corresponding crowding out effect. However, Wang Chong and Zhu Hong pointed out that structural monetary policy inhibit the role of market allocation of resources, greatly increased the probability of unfair competition and this distorted the interest rate mechanism and expectation mechanism that were original, originally determined by the market. Based on the above facts, we propose hypothesis 2, a central bank in inclusion of green credit into the collateral framework of the new monetary policy will increase the credit cost of both green and non-green companies. 
If paper select elected company that have issued green bonds in Shanghai and Shenzhen Asia for five years from 2016 to 2020, example, the expanded variables and explanatory variables all come from the one database and are all annual data. The expanded variables in this article are corporate financing variables, including corporate credit availability, credit maturity structure, and credit cost. The collateral expansion policy was introduced in June 2018, and this article used annual data. So the policy variable is assigned a value of all before 2018 and a value of one in 2018 and beyond. For the part of empirical analysis, the first impact is to expand collateral scope on credit availability. If hypothesis one holds, a new monetary policy incorporating green credit into the central bank's qualified product framework will not obviously impact the availability of corporate green credit financing. Table 3 shows the regression results of overall policy changes on the green credit financing availability. As can be seen from the second column, the ratio of short-term and long-term borrowing of firms to total assets and estimated coefficient of policies have no obvious negative impact. This change even slightly negatively affected corporate credit availability, but there is no obvious relationship. The reason for this may be related to the institutional factors. China's state-owned bank dominates both in terms of market concentration and size. On the one hand, state-owned banks do not have strong competitors, lack a sound incentive mechanism, and low operating efficiency, and cannot provide timely and practical help for enterprises' green credit financing. In addition, the lack of information disclosure of green bond financing leads to possible information asymmetry between state-owned banks and enterprises that issue green bonds, resulting in high loan costs and low return of banks which once again inhibits the supply of green credit to enterprises. The second impact is collateral expansion on the credit costs of green and non-green companies. In research hypothesis, if hypothesis 2 is true, the collateral expansion policy significantly increases the credit costs of enterprises, as can be seen from the fifth column of Table 3. The implementation of collateral policies have increased the credit costs of enterprises. That is, the ratio of financing costs to total liabilities have risen by 0.39% and their other conditions being equal. The second and third columns to table 4 shows that the central bank's inclusion of green credit in the collateral framework of new monetary policy makes green enterprises be more attractive. Regardless of whether their main business is relative to green, the credit costs of enterprises with green as their main business increased by 0.58%, and that of non-green enterprises increased by 0.39%. The increase in the former is about 1.5 times of the latter. We found that the central bank's inclusion of green credit in the collateral framework of new monetary policy does not significantly reduce the credit costs of enterprises, but have an obvious negative impact on the credit costs of enterprises. Implementing a new policy may have acted differently than the targeted support for green businesses, as governments have hoped. Uh, so now we can uh, do a summary and conclusion. Well, uh, our study focused on the central bank's inclusion of green credit and green bonds in the collateral framework, which started in 2018. And we want to study the policy implications on forums and its effectiveness in supporting green finance. However, although the policy seems very good for our economy, uh, our empirical results shows a surprisingly negative effect. First, we saw the impact of the policy on the availability of green credit is not obvious or even slightly negative. Uh, and we also found that uh, the policy actually increased the cost of corporate credit for both green and non-green firms. So we have to draw a conclusion that uh, there is still room for improvement in our green credit policy to overcome the rent-seeking problem and improve the efficiency of market resource allocation. So that's all for our presentation. Thank you for listening.